This is assignment seven in test prep, uh, polynomials and quadratic equations. So with quadratic equations comes factoring and graphing for the calculator section. Uh, so on this one, the best thing to do is just solve for x squared and then take the square root of both sides and you get plus and minus nine. So negative nine is the solution. The sum of the solution. So here you have to do, um, it's like the end of completing the square where you take the square root of both sides, positive and negative, and set x minus two equal to negative four and four and then solve it out. And then you have to sum negative two plus six. Okay, then which of the following is true? On number three, factor out the x. So x times x plus eight, so zero and negative eight are the two zeros. And so one and three are the solutions. Product of the solutions on four, so you need to factor it out, set them equal to zero and you get seven and negative three. So that product is negative 21. And for some reason I whited this out, never wrote in negative three again. All right, number five. <clears throat> okay, the largest solution to that. So you can set them equal to each other and take everything to the left. So negative three and negative four when you factor it out. So remember in the factoring game with the no calculator part, most likely it'll be this two numbers that multiply to your C value and add to me your B value will work when A is one. And it's probably what they're gonna give you on the no calculator part, to be honest. Uh, number six, so you wanna simplify, take everything to one side and same idea, factor it. Two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to negative eight. Negative 10 and two, then set them equal to zero and you get 10 and negative two. So 10 is um, the one that's given. Same idea here, I would substitute in um, 11, and then you get 88. So 11 does work. If it didn't, then you'd have to try numbers greater than 11 and smaller than 11. Okay, m equals negative five or seven. Okay, so c is it. Then here another like completing the square type of problem, except you have one more variable. So add P in both cases. So P minus six and P plus six. And so P plus six is the one that's given. A pretty crazy problem on 10. So now we're getting out of quadratic land for a little bit. And so here you need to do work where you get x cubed over y cubed. How is that done? Well, it's about getting the problems that can, the, the terms that contain the y to the third on one side of the equation. So add the 2ay to the third and subtract the x cubed over, then factor out a y to the third and factor out an x to the third. And then you're gonna divide both sides by y to the third times 2a minus 1 so that you produce the x to the third over y to the third. So 2a plus 1 over 2a minus 1. That's a hard problem. And I would not expect um, people to get that. So here we go with, you know, pick your, your favorite number. So let's say 1. x equals 1. Why not try x equals one? And you're gonna get nine over four equals one over four plus what? You know, so nine over four equals one over four plus what? Well, that's eight over four, which is two. So which one of these, when x is one, gives you two? It's d. So the numbers game is a, is a great thing to play um, when you can. Here, this is just about factor the top, take out a common factor. So you have an x squared, y squared that's part of both and a 50. 
factor that out and you get 2x minus y, 2xy minus 1 left over. So I know right away it's going to be c because regardless of what this reduction is, I've got to have a 2xy minus 1. And so when you reduce, you get an xy and then the 50 over 25 is 2. Kind of another hard problem there. But you might see that, to be honest. And uh, here, what is x in terms of y? So you got to solve for x. So subtract the a over. You need to get a common denominator, and then you need to take the reciprocal. So you multiply a by top and bottom by y, and then condense that fraction, and then take its reciprocal. Another kind of hard problem in, in what we're dealing with. So factoring, here we go. Two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 8. So x plus 2, x plus plus 6. Um, 15, same idea, two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to 1. So 4 and negative 3 are those two numbers. 16, two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 8, so negative 10 and 2. On and on with the same idea, um, when you get to ones that are a little bit crazier, you might want to play the numbers game. So like if you chose 1 here, you would have negative 20 plus 9 if you put 1 in, and, and that's negative 11. So when I do this product, which one of these gives me negative 11 when I multiply? So this is 11 on this one, and this is negative 1. The numbers game just really helps you when you get stuck. Here's another one. If I let x be 1... I have 17 here, so which one of these gives me 17? Well, 9 squared is 81 minus 64 is 17. It's just, it works. When, how do you know when it works? When you have variable expressions that are the answer choices. Here's another one. I finally did it. X is 3. And I went through and worked them all out. Uh, just because it looks like I had to try a couple different ones. Um, this one gives you negative 12, 36 minus 48. So which one of these gives me negative 12 when I let x be 3? So 1 minus 4 on the inside here, negative 3 times 4. Yeah, try numbers. They really do work. So factor. And then that's sides of a rectangle. So you got to put them all around there and add them up. So 4x plus 9 plus 9. Okay, so 3w by w. Increase by 5 and by 2, the, the length and the width. So take the product out and then simplify the 6w plus 5w. Very interesting problem there. And then another problem you can use the numbers game on. Let x be 1. So this is 8 divided by 4 is 2, remainder 0. It's 0. Um, yeah, so a lot of times the numbers game works. And that is assignment 7 in test prep.